Hello friends, this video on nutrition in plants part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Talk a little more about symbiosis. So it is an association between two or more species where one or both are mutually benefited. So for example, in this case, if you look at this example here, now it is not necessary that symbiosis happens only in case of fungi. Now fungi also exhibit symbiotic relationship, but there are other organisms which also show symbiotic relationship. So here on the screen, you can see a bee and a flower. So in this case, there is a symbiotic relationship between the bee and the flower. Why? Because the bee is obtaining its food from the flower. It is obtaining the pollen from the flower. So that is how the bee is getting benefited. It is getting its food from the flower. What about the flower? The flower is getting pollinated by this bee. So if you know what is pollination, pollination is nothing but uh, you can, I mean, I'll not get into the detail. You can just think that it is a step in the process of sexual reproduction of plants. So this bee helps in the process of pollination and that's how it helps in sexual reproduction of flowers. So in this case, both the bee as well as the flower, both of them get benefited. So this is an example of symbiosis. So let us look at other symbiotic examples. So let us look at this example of the buffalo and the crow. So what kind of relationship exists here? Do you think both of them are getting benefited? So look at this interesting example. So here the crows which are sitting on the buffalo, do you know what are they doing? They are just eating up the tiny ants and aphids which might be present on the skin of the buffalo. So the buffalo skin is generally very untidy and you see a lot of insects on the skin of the buffalo. So these crows, they are eating those tiny insects and ants and that's how they are getting their food. Now what about the buffalo? So the buffalo is also getting benefited because somebody is cleaning up its body of insects and other things. So that means the buffalo is benefited that somebody is eating up the ants on its body and the crow is benefited because it is getting something to eat. So again this is an example of symbiosis. Another example, the same example which I told you in the last slide, a flowering plant and the pollinators, that is the bee. So the bee acts as a pollinator because it helps in the process of pollination for this flowering plant. And this plant, it provides nutrition, it provides food to the bee. Right? So again, both of them are being benefited. You take examples of human beings and their domesticated animals. So domesticated animals, they get their food, all care from human beings. At the same time, they also do a lot of stuff for human beings. For example, if you think of a dog, a dog is very faithful to his master. So they also do a lot of stuff. So these kind of relationship where you have mutual benefit. Now it is not always necessary that the benefit has to be mutual because when you look at, in fact when I define symbiosis, I clearly mentioned that it is an association where one or both the organisms are benefited. So you, if you look at this example, the lice present on in the hair. So in this case, the lice feeds on the blood from the hair. So the lice actually takes in uh, nutrition from our head but is is our head getting benefited in any way not really so in this case just one of them is getting benefited but still this is an example of symbiosis think of the worms and the insects which might live inside our intestine so these worms they take their nutrition from our body now some of them might co even cause diseases in our body so they might even harm us but some of them might not harm us so they are also symbiotic relationship. Now comes the example of fungi. So this is a very popular symbiotic relationship between fungi and algae and this is called lichen. So lichen is the name given to the symbiotic relationship between algae and fungi. Now what are algae? Now have you ever seen a pond with a green grass like layer on its surface? I'm sure you would have seen it. 
so that green colored surface is formed of algae so algae are like uh, plant like structures but they are not exactly plants but they are like uh, they are generally seen on wet surfaces very tiny very small spongy structure grass like appearance so they are the algae so this algae lichen is a symbiotic relationship between the algae and the fungi and in this relationship both algae and fungi are dependent on each other and they cannot live on their own so they are totally dependent on each other for their survival and mostly you will be able to see these lichens as green colored patches on the bark of trees so as you see here so on the bark of the trees you see these green colored structures so that is nothing but the lichen so how they help each other now algae they contain chlorophyll so they are green colored chlorophyll containing uh, organisms so that's why they can perform photosynthesis so algae performs photosynthesis and it provides food for fungi as well so the fungi is getting benefited because algae can perform photosynthesis but how is the algae getting benefited now the fungi protects the algae from drying in the sun how by protecting it from sunlight by enclosing it within their body so basically the algae is like wrapped inside by the fungi so the fungi offers protection so fungi provides protection to the algae and the algae provides food to the fungi and both of them cannot survive without each other because if the fungi doesn't get food so the fungi will not live if the fungi doesn't exist the algae will dry up in the sun because there is nobody to protect it so that way they both are dependent on each other and this is one of the most popular example of symbiotic relationship so lichen so that is that is why i told you that there are many different ways by which fungi obtain their food now some fungi are saprotrophic that is they feed on dead and decayed organisms some fungi are parasitic they live inside the body of some plants or animals and cause diseases some fungi are symbiotic that is they live in a mutually benefiting association with algae and that's how they derive their food from algae so these are the various ways by which fungi obtain their nutrition now since fungi was a new term for you so we have discussed a lot of things about fungi so now let us see some of the importance of fungi i mean how fungi is important where can they be used so they help in decomposition of organic waste why because they feed on dead and decaying matter so that means they can actually help the environment get rid of dead bodies right because it will help in the decomposition of dead bodies and it will provide the nutrients and the minerals back to the soil which can be utilized for the plants for their growth and development valuable in plastic industry in the manufacture of plastics also they play a very important role valuable in obtaining drugs like penicillin in fact the drug penicillin which is an antibiotic so antibiotics are extremely important because they help to fight the bacterial infection any infection caused by bacteria can be cured by these kind of antibiotics so penicillin was the first antibiotic and it was derived from a fungi play an important role in the baking industry whether you prepare a cake whether you bake a bread so everywhere you would need the help of fungi so it also helps in the baking industry so these are some of the places where fungi plays a very important role so you should know that fungi is nothing to be ignored or neglected because they play very important roles in our day to day life thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.